Horizontal Alignment Part 2. In the last lesson, we discussed about various design elements related to horizontal alignment. A road can never be straight. In fact, straight road is not desirable also from safety point of view and it is practically necessary to change the alignment. Now, when a road alignment is to be changed, then the elements which are related to horizontal alignment include horizontal curve. When horizontal curve is there, one has to think in terms of the super elevation. Also, it is required to provide transition curve at both ends of the horizontal curve. So, there are transition curves which is another element. Then for various reasons, mechanical reasons, mechanical uh, requirement, psychological requirement, it is necessary to widen the portion of the road or the carriageway on curves which is known as widening of road on curves and also it is necessary uh, to have adequate side distance, particularly uh, when a vehicle is approaching or negotiating a horizontal curve. So, sufficient distance towards the inner side of the curve should be free from obstruction and therefore, which we call is calculation of setback distance to make sure that required distance inside the in the inner side of the curve is available. So, the elements what we talked about are horizontal curve, super elevation, transition curve, extra widening and setback distance. These are the five major elements related to horizontal alignment. In the last lesson, we discussed about horizontal curve and also discussed about the super elevation, particularly the need and basis for providing super elevation. So, we discussed about basically try to answer the question why it is necessary to provide super elevation basically to counteract the centrifugal force and what is the basis for providing super elevation at horizontal curve considering mixed traffic operation in India. So, the design aspect of super elevation uh, particularly considering the mixed traffic operations in India that also we discussed. Let us have a, a quick review of what we discussed in terms of the design of super elevation, particularly considering the mixed traffic operation. Basic equilibrium equation which was used is this one E plus F equal to V square by 127 R. Now, here E is the super elevation, F is the coefficient of friction or what we called as 
uh, side friction factor that is equal to v square by 127 r, where v is the speed in kilometer per hour and r is the radius of horizontal curve in meter. So, this is the basic equilibrium equation super elevation and side friction factor together are counteracting the centrifugal force. Now, in mixed traffic operation, if we design or rather a road system is used by slow moving vehicles as well as by fast moving vehicles. Now, obviously, when a road is designed for the design speed, then the operation must be safe for any vehicle traveling at design speed. So, most of the fast moving vehicles are also expected to travel at the design speed, but slow moving vehicles if the super elevation is provided considering the design speed, it will obviously be safe for vehicles which are moving at design speed, but it will not be uh, comfortable and some cases it may not be even safe for slow moving vehicles which are traveling at a speed much lesser than the design speed. But the road section one way is designed for the maximum speed, so it must be safe for the maximum speed which vehicles where you know vehicles are operating at maximum speed. On the other hand, it also must be safe for movement of slow moving vehicle. So, that makes the design of super elevation in mixed traffic operation a complex task. What is done in Indian practice? Super elevation is designed for 75 percent of the design speed. Now, step 1 is therefore, super elevation for 75 percent of the design speed, not the complete design speed. So, super elevation is calculated neglecting side friction, the earlier basic equation was E plus F equal to V square by 127 R. Now, this F is made 0 initially and V is taken as 75 percent of the design speed. That makes the equation V square by 225 R instead of V square by 127 R. So, whatever E is calculated, if it is less than the permissible maximum super elevation, then we provide the calculated super elevation. That means, it is safe and it is permissible also, but it may happen that when the super elevation is calculated, the calculated value is more than the permissible super elevation standard or acceptable super elevation value. In that case, we can provide only super elevation up to the maximum permissible limit, but the safety of operation is to be checked against the value of coefficient of friction or the lateral friction f. So, what we do in that case, if E cal is greater than E max, then we provide E max and proceed with step 3 and step 4. which is we now calculate the value of f, how much is uh, we are depending on this f. So, now here we take the complete speed not 75 percent of the speed, because ultimately E plus f equal to V square by 127 r that is the basic equilibrium con uh, condition. And we know that we have provided the maximum permissible value of e a e super elevation which is 7 percent normally. So, we calculate the value of f. Now, if this f value is less than the permissible value, which is again as per the Indian practice, 
the permissible value is 0.15, then the overall operation is safe or E plus F equal to V square by 127 R. This basic equilibrium considering this basic equilibrium E and F values are sufficient to counteract the centrifugal force. If we find that F is more than the calculated value, then there are two options practically. Recall the basic equation, it is E plus F equal to V square by 127 R. So, E we know that this is the maximum E we can provide. If we know this is the maximum F that is permissible, normally the value of E is 7 percent, so 0 0.07 and F is 0.15. So, we know this total value limiting value is 0 0.22, if 7 percent is the permissible value. Then only possibility is either to reduce this V speed limit, limit the pitch speed or put restriction on the speed or have a better value of R, a larger radius or a flatter radius. So, one of these two things are to be taken up. So, either provide a larger radius or calculate the speed or the restricted speed. If we calculate the restricted speed, then for the given R, what is the value of V A or V allowable speed that we can calculate from this basic equation. Now, let us come back to today's topic. After completing this lesson, the student will be able to understand ash to approach for design of super elevation. So far, we have discussed only about the approaches which are normally uh, considered in India for design of super elevation under mixed traffic operation. So, today we shall talk about the approach recommended by ASHTO. So, all our discussion will be around ASHTO recommendations and ASHTO approach for super elevation design. In particular, we shall cover the following elements, particularly different methods for distribution of E and F over a range of curves, how E and F are to be distributed, what are the different methods that are discussed, maximum permissible super elevation, maximum side friction and what is the effect of grade on super elevation design. So, these are the elements we shall discuss today. Now, ASHTO recommends five different approaches or methods for distribution of E and F. E is super elevation, F is the friction factor, side friction factor. First method, it says that E and F are directly proportional to 1 by R. E and F are directly proportional to 1 by R. That means, it indicates basically a straight line relationship both for E super elevation as well as F side friction factor between 1 by R equal to 0, 1 by R equal to 0 is the tangent point to 1 by r equal to 1 by r minimum. r minimum is the radius of the circular curve. So, what is suggested as per this approach a straight line relation for E and F between 1 by r equal to 0 and 1 by r equal to r minimum. This r minimum is nothing but the radius of the horizontal curve and 
initially 1 by r equal to 0, because here the r is infinity or basically it is at the tangent point and a straight line relationship for vehicles traveling at design or average running speed. Carefully observe this part. This indicates a straight line relationship for E and F for vehicles which are traveling at design or average running speed. Now, this method has considerable merit and logic, but yet it is a simple approach which can be used, which can be adapted. This is due to the fact that actually at tangent portion there is no centrifugal force. Now, as 1 by r value changes, that means curvature is changing gradually, the centrifugal force is introduced and it is maximum when r equal to r minimum or the r equal to the radius of the horizontal curve. So, if we assume that speed is uniform, then it is logical and it is uh, correct also to have a linear relationship both for E and F for uh, in terms of the distribution. So, it is considerable merit and logic is there and also this is a simple approach. This is very simple in fact. So, now this method is appropriate if each vehicle travels at a constant speed on tangent and curve. Earlier also I have mentioned here that for vehicles traveling at design or average running speed. Now, the same point is coming back here. This method is appropriate and correct if each vehicle in the traffic stream is traveling at a constant speed on tangent, on curve of intermediate degree and also curve with minimum radius. In all places vehicles, each vehicle is traveling at uniform speed. This is a question mark or here there is a question mark, because often it is found some drivers, they have a tendency to travel faster on tangent and flatter curves than the speed whatever they normally maintain on the sharper curve. That means, vehicles may not travel or have a tendency not to travel uniformly at the same speed over tangent, over flatter curve and also over sharper curves. That puts a question mark on this approach for distribution of E and F. Now, let us see the graph. Here the distribution is shown for super elevation and also for the corresponding side friction. So, this is the point 1 by r is 0 and this is the point 1, 1 by r is 1 by r minimum or the r minimum is the radius of the circular curve. Now, it indicates a straight line relationship as shown here by the yellow line for the distribution of super elevation. A corresponding distribution of F is also shown, the side friction factor. Again, this is the point where 1 by r is 0 and here this is the point where 1 by r equal to 1 by r minimum. So, here also side friction factor, it also shows a linear distribution that is what is approach 1 or method 1 for distribution of E and F. Coming back to the second method now, 
according to the second method, if first reaches the maximum value, that means side friction factor is increased initially till side friction factor reaches its maximum value. Once side friction factor reaches its maximum value, then the super elevation is introduced and super elevation is increased up to the maximum allowable super elevation. So, first E and no F, E only uh, first F no E, E comes only when F has reached to its maximum permissible value. So, according to this approach, let us see first F and then E are increased in inverse proportion to the radius of curvature. So, here because we are introducing super elevation only when F value has reached to its maximum value. We are introducing super elevation only when the F value has already reached to its maximum value. Therefore, it may happen that for flatter curve, because the requirement is less, it may not be required even to provide any super elevation, because the side friction factor alone may be sufficient to counteract the effect of the centrifugal force. And even the F value required may not exceed the value of F max or the maximum permissible value. So, therefore, it may not be necessary to provide super elevation. So, for flatter curves, this may result into a situation where we may not require super elevation. Second, super elevation when introduced increases rapidly. Now, why it is so? Because initially super elevation is not used, it is only the F value which is used. So, E value is used only when F is saturated, that means F has reached to its maximum value. Then as the curve becomes sharper, the whole effect is counteracted by the super elevation only. So, therefore, although initially super elevation is not used and only the F value is used, but when E is used, E increases very rapidly as the curve become sharper. This method has particularly is particularly advantageous for urban roads, where frequently it is not possible to provide super elevation, because speeds these are essentially or often low speed facility, centrifugal force is also not may not be very high as compared to the centrifugal force whatever uh, may be obtained on highways with much higher design speed. So, therefore, this method is particularly advantageous for low speed urban roads or urban street, because uh, of practical constraints super elevation frequently cannot be provided on such urban roads. So, there this method can be applied. Now, let us see the distribution of E and F. Here is the distribution of E and F as per this method 2. As I mentioned, initially super elevation is not introduced, that means only this F value is increasing. You can see this F value is increasing from 0 to its maximum value, that is what is being done. Now, once F reaches its maximum value, then it is kept constant 
and that point onwards E value starts increasing. So, super elevation is introduced only when F has reached to its maximum value. So, this shows the distribution of super elevation and the corresponding F remember at design speed. Now, let us see the method 3 for distribution of E and F. In this method, it is the reverse now, what we have discussed for method 2. In method 3, initially E is introduced or that means only super elevation is introduced. So, super elevation is introduced in the beginning and it is only super elevation what is used till super elevation reaches its maximum permissible value. That means, it is only E till the E value reaches to its maximum. Once E reaches to its maximum, then only F is used or F is introduced and then F is also increased as the curve become sharper. That means, let us see here. In this case, E is introduced up to E max for vehicles traveling at design speed. Again carefully observe that it is with respect to design speed and no side friction is used for flatter cars for the same reason as we have discussed for method 2, because if it is a flatter curve, only super elevation may be adequate to counteract the effect of the centrifugal force and the required super elevation may not cross the limiting value of the super elevation. So, E may be well within the limit of E max maximum super elevation and as long as E is within the limit of E max F is not introduced because F is introduced only when E is not able to counteract that centrifugal force. That means, it is necessary to go beyond the maximum super elevation limit. So, if it is for flatter curve, it may not be necessary to go up to the use of coefficient of friction. So, it may happen that no side friction on flat curves, because E may be lesser than E max at design speed again carefully observe with respect to design speed. Now, beyond E max F is increased and it is increased rapidly as curves become sharper. Now, why it increases rapidly? Again the same reason because up to E max F is not used whenever F is used that point onwards E remain at a level of E max. So, there is practically no contribution, no additional contribution now rather from the super elevation. So, as the curve become sharper, the whole effect is counteracted by the side friction factor F. So, therefore, F initially although is not used but whenever it is used for sharper curves, it increases very rapidly. Also, understand clearly that we are talking about or we are talking about this distribution with respect to design speed. Now, if vehicles do not travel at design speed. Suppose, vehicles traveling, uh, vehicles are traveling at a speed lesser than the design speed. In that case, we have provided super elevation corresponding to the design speed. 
So, for vehicles which are not travelling at design speed or rather they are travelling at a speed lesser than the design speed. If you now think of that equilibrium equation E plus F equal to V square by 127 R, the basic equilibrium equation, we have for the operating V, E is operating V is lesser than the design speed, but E is provided with respect to the design speed. That means, we are essentially considering a negative value of the coefficient of friction for vehicles which are not travelling at design speed. Let us see this equilibrium equation again. What I was mentioning, this is E plus F equal to V square by 127 R or V square by G R this is the basic equilibrium. So, essentially what it indicates we have provided E value corresponding to the design speed. Now, if vehicle is not travelling at design speed then V square by 127 R this value will be lesser as compared to a situation where vehicle is travelling at design speed. So, if vehicles are not travelling at design speed, this V square by 127 R, R value, this value is lesser, but we have provided E with respect to the design speed. That means, E value is higher. So, this immediately indicates that a negative value of F is assumed and this will be there only for the flatter curves, where vehicles are travelling at average running speed, not at design speed. This mark difference in F at different curves, flatter curves, tangent portion, sharper curves, that particular aspect, this mark difference in F uh, for different curves is not logical and may result into erratic driving either at design or average running speed. That is what is uh, the disadvantages with method 3. Let us see the distribution how it looks like. So, this is the distribution as indicated here. you can see initially F is kept 0 and E is only increased, only E is increased. E is increased up to a value where up to a value of E max, till that time this F value remains 0. After that one E remains constant and equal to E max and as 1 by r changes, it goes here up to 1 by r minimum, both for distribution of super elevation and distribution of side friction factor. Then as this changes, now this f value increases rapidly, but what I was indicating that this is again observe that this is the corresponding distribution of F at design speed, not at average running speed. If we take the average running speed, then for method 3, it will show altogether a different distribution, because the F value may be or will be negative. 
instead of remaining 0, if you take the corresponding uh, f at average running speed, then f value will actually go down or it will take a negative trend. Now, let us see method 4. Method 4 is same as method 3, but this is based on average running speed instead of the design speed. So, this is similar to method 3, but in method 3 a major problem was super elevation was designed considering the design speed, which was a problem, because vehicles which were traveling at average running speed lesser than the design speed, for them f value was going in the negative range, just to make that equilibrium or keep that equilibrium equation. So, here instead of method 4, idea is instead of using the average uh, uh, design speed, actually average running speed is used, average running speed is used. Now, this now this overcomes the deficiency of method 3 by using E at speeds lower than the design speed. Now, obviously, if instead of design speed, the running speed is used, then for running speed, maximum super elevation will reach later near the middle of the curvature range. If V is the design speed, then quickly this E max will reach, because higher value of, because of the higher value of the uh, speed, but instead if the average running speed is used, then E max will reach later or uh, in the middle of the curvature range. And at average running speed, no F is required up to this curvature because it is similar to method 3, unless and until E reaches to its maximum value, unless and until E reaches to its maximum value, we are not using the value of F. So, till E reaches to E max, F is not required or no F is required up to that curvature. Now, if again like method 3, if when introduced increases rapidly and in direct proportion for sharper curves. The reason is again simple, because initially f is not used, but when f is used corresponding to the running speed, the whole effect is taken by the value of f. So, f increases very rapidly for sharper curves. Essentially, this method or method 4, it has the same disadvantages of method 3, but with smaller degree, because the super elevation here is calculated not based on the design speed, rather based on the average running speed, that makes the problem of or uh, that makes, although the problems are similar, it makes the problem with a smaller degree, but it has essentially the same disadvantages. Now, let us see the last method for distribution of E and F over 
Okay. So, this is method 4. So, according to method 4, let us see the distribution how it looks like. Here, one can see that E is initially introduced, E is initially increased till it reaches maximum, then only F is introduced, but that F distribution of F is with respect to the average running speed. So, now if we plot the distribution of X f considering the design speed, then f shows an increase. But actually, if, if we consider the corresponding f at average running speed, then the f distribution would be like this, it will not change, it will be like this and then it will increase rapidly to reach to this point. But this yellow line shows the distribution corresponding uh, distribution of f at design speed. That is why it is indicating a slight value of or a value of f even in this range also when the super elevation is increasing from 0 to its maximum value. So, here super elevation 0 to its maximum value, but this super elevation when the super elevation is provided, if we see the distribution of f corresponding to the average running speed, then it will be 0, but here the yellow line shows the corresponding distribution of f at design speed, not at average running speed. If you take the average running speed, it will be like this as indicated by the green line. So, now let us see the last method or method 5. In this method, E and F are in a curvilinear relation with 1 by R. This is quite interesting, trying to take advantage of or the good thing of the earlier approaches and then uh, suggesting another alternative method. Now, drivers have a tendency for overdriving on flat to intermediate curves. This I have indicated earlier also, when uh, I was talking about approach 1 that vehicle uh, drivers do not travel essentially at uniform speed, rather some drivers may have a tendency for overdriving on flat to intermediate curves. So, if we consider that particular aspect, then it is desirable to have E which is similar to method 4. Why? Because ultimately there is very little risk for overdriving on such curves. The reasons are simple because we have E which is adequate for average running speed and vehicles which will even run faster or at greater speed for them considerable amount of f is also available. So, therefore, altogether there is very little risk for overriding. Let us try to understand this part once again. For vehicles which are overriding on flat to intermediate curves, it is desirable to have a distribution similar to method 4, because there is very little risk for overriding on such curves. Why? E is adequate or super elevation available is adequate for average running speed, not the design speed again. And for vehicles which are traveling at greater speed than the average running speed, for them also 
considerable amount of f is available. So, it is desirable to have an approach like method 4, a distribution like method 4. But method 1 is also advantageous. Why? Let us see, because method 1 avoids use of Emacs for a substantial part of the range of curve ready. E does not become Emacs so quickly. Therefore, method 5 actually takes advantage of both method 1 and method 4. Therefore, it suggests a distribution of E and F reasonably retaining the advantages of both methods 1 and method 5. Car 5, we get unsymmetrical parabolic form, which is a practical distribution of E and F over the range of curvature. Now, let us see, observe carefully, observe carefully, this was method 4, and green line shows method 1 now what is used method 5 it is trying to keep advantage or take advantage of both approach 4 and approach 1. It is shape wise, it is similar to method 4, but Emacs in method 4, it reaches very early at this point, but in method 5, Emacs is reached, you know, not so quickly. So, that is what the advantage which is taken from method 1, but it is distributed and the basic approach that both E and F are available for faster moving vehicle as well as vehicles which are traveling at design speed and vehicles which are traveling at running speed slightly lesser than the uh, design speed for both of them this becomes appropriate. So, that is what shows method 4, what we got for method 1 by the green line and the yellow line shows the curvilinear distribution both for super elevation and the corresponding side friction factor. So, altogether each method has its own advantages and disadvantages that is why all 5 methods are indicated but method 5 appears to be most suitable and practical out of all the methods, but each method has its own position and own adv advantages and associated disadvantages. Now, let us say we have discussed the distribution every time we have mentioned that E reaches to its maximum value f reaches to its maximum value that shows there is a limiting value for E and for f. Let us discuss now what is the maximum super elevation rates as indicated in H2. Now, super elevation it basically depends on maximum super elevation rate depends on four factors climatic condition essentially frequency and amount of snow and ice not a very relevant factor in Indian context of course, 
but this is one factor which controls the maximum super elevation rate. Then terrain condition, what is the type of terrain because requirement will be different, we may have to compromise depending on the terrain. So, flat rolling mountainous terrain, type of the area for whether the road is located in urban area or in rural area because altogether they indicate different operating environment, speeds are also lower, providing super elevation may be practically difficult in some cases on urban areas. So, therefore, it depends on the type of area and most importantly, it depends on the frequency of slow moving vehicle because slow moving vehicle that affect providing high super elevation value because for high speed vehicles providing higher super elevation value may be ok, but it depends if the slow moving vehicles are there. So, therefore, providing high super elevation value may be problematic for slow moving vehicle. So, therefore, it shows that no single Emax is actually applicable. So, therefore, it is desirable to use different Emax value, but considering the design consistency aspect, it is desirable to one Emax or the maximum permissible value at least within a region and similar climatic condition. So, therefore, 5 different Emax values are suggested. 4 to 12 percent, 12 percent is the maximum practical maximum value where snow and ice do not exist, 10 percent is the highest super elevation rate that is commonly used, 8 percent indicates the maximum practicable limit where snow and ice are factors, also for gravel roads these are used and where traffic congestion and extensive marginal development acts to restrict the top speeds a super elevation maximum of value of 4 to 6 percent is used. Now, the side friction factor also there is a limit because every time we was talking about that F max. So, that side friction vary with speed, different researchers and organizations they have also developed different curves, but ASTO recommends a curve which is very similar to the curve shown here by YOLO line coefficient of the side friction factor value ranges from 0.17 to 0 0.08 depending on the speed and essentially this curve has two different slope up to 80 kilometer one slope and then beyond 80 there is another slope. Value is around uh, about 80 kilometer per hour the coefficient of friction value is around 1.14. So, this car provides reasonable margin of safety at high speed and lead to somewhat low value for low design speed than do some other curves. As I have indicated already several other curves are also available. Now, when these F values are used in conjunction with the recommended method 5, they determine the F distribution. So, we get a F distribution as indicated here as shown here. Okay. So, this is the F distribution line that is shown here. Now, subtracting this computed F values from the computed E by 100 plus F, here E is expressed in percentage that is why it is E by 100 plus F. So, we know what is the total E by 100 plus F for design speed. Now, subtracting this computed F values from the computed value of E plus F that gives us the distribution of or the finalized distribution of E by 100 as shown by the green line here. So, that is how we obtain the finalized distribution of Now, this E max varies from 4 percent to 6 to 8, 10 goes up to 12. So, therefore, for different E max, Ashto gives different curves. 
this x value indicates radius of curve in meter and y the super elevation rate and obviously, the super elevation will be function of the speed. So, for different speed different lines are indicated and like this different curves are there for different Emax values 4 percent, 6 percent, 8, 10 and goes up to 12 percent. So, these tables are available, figures are available and tables are also available. Now, what is the effect of grade? Does it really affect? Practically on long and fairly steep grades, driver train to drive faster in downgrade than in upgrade direction and for finer design, this effect can be taken into consideration, particularly on divided highway with each roadway independently super elevated or on one way ramp that may be there. Therefore, design speed may be assumed slightly higher for downgrade and slightly lower for upgrade and accordingly this can be done. For undivided road normally it is not advisable uh, to have different super elevation design rather no adjustment is required. Try to answer these questions, mention different methods for distribution of E and F over a range of curves, explain the factors affecting maximum super elevation rates and discuss the effect of grade on super elevation design. Now, let us try to answer the questions which were raised earlier. Derive the equilibrium equation the same sketch I have discussed in the last lesson also. You can take the components p cos theta. Similarly, if this is w, this is w sin theta, this is again w cos theta and component of p in the vertical direction perpendicular direction is again p sin theta. So, then take the equilibrium p cos theta and try to balance it, you one can get finally this equation E plus F equal to V square by G R. If we put the value of V in kilometer per hour and put the value of Z, then this becomes V square by 127 R. Now, find out the radius of curve where radius of curve is 200 meter is 7 percent and f is 0.15 what is the safe driving speed again the basically the same equilibrium e plus f equal to v square by 127 r put all the values of e f and r e f and v uh, e f and r get the value of v next was design speed is 100 kilometer per hour all these things are given so we design super elevation considering v square by 225 r calculated super elevation becomes 1.148 more than 7 percent check for f f value also is more than permissible value of 0.15 so we actually go or recommend the speed restriction restricted speed we calculate by taking the permissible e permissible f and again using the same equilibrium equation e plus f equal to v square by 127 r here the restricted speed is around 90 kilometer per hour. Thank you.